But so. I think I think one of the things that happened though is that the industry really rallied it did. Uh, to to tell the public that this was a limited number of violins. And Andy, Absolutely. I, I got to put a nod yeah. to you because you you guys were in the thick of it, yeah. and you were your ships were helping out the whole Caribbean during this. But that was a huge effort by the cruise industry, I know, to yeah. tell people that the Caribbean is open for business. I, I thought it was a, one of the best examples I've seen of the industry forgetting that we compete and mm -hmm. getting together immediately to to figure out how to help and the whole industry I, I thought did a great job sending ships down um, we evacuated people from st thomas and the stories from those people were were really um quite um shocking um so the industry all got together and reacted immediately pulled people out but then did i think did a very good job in telling the story hey listen the caribbean's open and adjusting itineraries such that vacationers had a fantastic experience immediately in the aftermath of, of the storm and thereafter. And so what we saw was we saw a six-week period where there was weakened demand, mm -hmm. um, mostly in the Eastern Caribbean, and, and it really was concentrated to the region that was most uh, um, seriously affected by the storms. Um, and, but after six weeks, demand came, really came back and, and it showed the resilience, uh, I think, of the industry. So is it, all, is it completely back now or what do you think? Caribbean is, is largely back with the exception of if, an, if, if you're still running an itinerary that has an island that hasn't fully recovered, for example, Tortola, or, you know, which very sadly is still dealing with um, the significant impact from the storm. Um, I think travelers recognize the specificity of that and um, react to that. What about St. Martin and things like that? Um, coming back, um, but... In Puerto Rico, of course, we can't. Puerto Rico. Yeah. yeah, but Puerto ships, Rico. you know, we, have, we had ships turn in Puerto Rico after the storm and they were full. Uh, all of the ships turned, I think the first one turned, it was somewhere in the region of the 14th of November and the ship was full um, and, and did well. So I think the industry did a great job to react. The story um, that was told by travel agents to consumers that the Caribbean's open and ships are sailing and, and it's, it's okay to go back was fantastic. So I think the industry got together. And I also think there's been a great effort among uh, the industry to, to raise money to help destinations that have been affected. So we've we raised a million and a quarter dollars and we matched it. So we've, we've got two and a half million dollars going down into to restarting schools because um, you, you met people coming off the ship who were bringing their kids to the US to go to school because schools had been destroyed and not everyone has the resources to do that. So, so we focused on education as our rebuilding efforts. So there's a little bit of rebuilding. There's a lot uh, of new efforts. There's still a communication job, but very resilient and business Fantastic. came back. Now, Alex, I wanted to get you from the land side because you have a lot of you know, travel down there. What, what did you see and, and come back? Yeah, and the land, obviously, it's, it's, it's a lot slower. The recovery in places like Puerto Rico is still way behind, and St. Martin still behind, St. Thomas still behind, because obviously it takes, takes longer time to recover. That being said, there are other places are booming as a result of that. The Dominican Republic, for example, is... Well, they, they didn't get hit, and you have they a were lot not, of resorts down yeah, there. Yeah, they were not hit, and, and yeah, the, the base is, 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 is big. We also had a little bit of a benefit rebound from the travel warnings, which is another whole topic that yes. we should discuss. Well, uh, we should. We'll, we'll get to that. Then. Yeah, and, uh, but, but, but we also had a benefit coming from the, the divert business going from other islands without inventory to other, to other regions. I think overall it's coming back. And I think for those destinations like Puerto Rico, like San Tomas, uh, like San Martin that were really hit, I think now uh, there are destinations that even on, on the land side, they're enjoyable, they're open for business, and I think we should all support them because they need us. And I think our job as a travel community is not just to do the business, but to do what is right. And if we have a chance to cooperate somehow, uh, I think it's better than sending uh, probably a small donation. It's better to keep recommending and speaking about it and send your passengers there because those destinations need the jobs. They need the tourism. That's right. yeah. And that was, in essence, our message when we were busy educating agents, I think, just to echo. You did the Andy same. Said, you did a very good the job. The One Caribbean Family Ambassador was just really talking about how we could make the biggest impact possible. And it really wasn't about 
sending a donation. It was really about saying tourism is the lifeblood of most of these economies on the islands. Yeah. And the single best thing we could do is to ensure that we get that industry back in order, get demand flowing back to those islands, and actually the, do the best job we can in terms of publicizing as accurately as possible what's open, what's under construction, and what's available and fully available for business where, you know, customers could have an experience that matched or exceeded their expectations. Right.